It's World Toilet Day, November 20, November 19th, 2018. And, uh, and I'm here with Charlie Beaver, our chairman of the Toilet Board Coalition. Um, and, uh, and we're really happy to, to kick off our virtual summit, uh, Transformation via the, the Sanitation Economy. I'm Cheryl Hicks, the Executive Director of the Toilet Board Coalition. Um, and so Charlie, we just wanted to um, have this time with you to, to learn a little bit more of, um, for those people that are just joining and don't know much about the Toilet Board Coalition. Unilever is a founding member of the Toilet Board Coalition. Can you talk a little bit about why um, Unilever and uh, peer companies in the coalition um, started this effort? Sure, uh, thanks for having me, Cheryl, and uh, happy World Toilet Day to everyone. Uh, so when uh, Unilever and a number of the other founding companies, uh, so Kimberly Clark, uh, Lixil, uh, Furmanish, uh, and others came together in 2014 to explore this idea, I think primarily driven by uh, a, a recognition on the scale of the problem uh, in terms of uh, access to uh, lack of access to safe sanitation, um, but also uh, very clear that if we could find ways to bring uh, more business-led approaches to the problem, working with governments, working with entrepreneurs and sanitation experts, we were very confident that we could unlock some very exciting and large new uh, business opportunities. And I think we're always very transparent about that from the beginning, which is uh, we want to do the right thing. So we want to do, uh, uh, to do good, but also to do well by doing good. Uh, and, uh, and so that's why we uh, came together as a coalition to start to explore those opportunities. Um, and, uh, and, and obviously the, the interest of the member companies was clear. So for Mixil would be about uh, building more toilets, uh, for Kimberly Clark, making sure that people have access to uh, toilet tissue, feminine hygiene products, uh, Furmanish, uh, making sure that those experiences are, are desirable and, uh, and fragrant. Uh, and for Unilever, it was about getting more toilets cleaned and more hands washed. So very transparent about the societal benefit, but also about the business opportunity that that presented. Thanks, Charlie. Maybe um, maybe we can see the uh, the, the logos of, of all of the members of the, the Toilet Board Coalition. We're now 25 members, um, grown from um, from this uh, initial leadership group of companies, and uh, and now we're spanning 25 organizations, which include business, um, uh, the largest NGOs and, and experts on the, the global sanitation um, uh, in the global sanitation sector. Uh, development sector as well as governments. Um, so we are a, a public-private partnership and, and a business-led um, public-private partnership, as Charlie was saying. Um, the idea is what are the new solutions that business can bring to the global sanitation crisis? So there's the members now um, up on your screen. Um, and, and, and maybe, Charlie, we can get a little bit into how you know, we started to look at um, business solutions mm. through the accelerator program. And, and, and so the Toilet Board Coalition's backborn, uh, back, uh, backbone program uh, has been our Toilet Accelerator program, which we started in 2016. And we've now had 12 um, companies come through the program, uh, just about to announce this week another six. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, that relationship, that business-to-business -business partnership relationship that we have uh, initiated through the Toilet Accelerator program? Sure. Well, it started off really uh, by scanning who was out there, what was out there, uh, and some of the, the emerging and uh, innovative solutions that sanitation entrepreneurs were developing. And as we started to contact them uh, and to hear what they were working about, what, what they were working on, and also some of the challenges that they were facing, we saw a fantastic opportunity to link uh, the experience uh, that is, is uh, very present in the member companies, uh, so business experience, overcoming uh, challenges at scale, uh, but also uh, connecting in with the very much startup and lean mentality of the sanitation entrepreneurs. And we saw an opportunity to collaborate. Uh, and in fact, you were very influential in, in bringing this idea uh, actually from Silicon Valley, this idea of uh, almost like a, a, a one-year tech startup with some clear stages to get through, uh, identifying clear objectives and then deploying and uh, um, identifying the expertise within the member companies to work uh, on a very uh, close level with uh, some of the entrepreneurs and their teams on the ground. And I think we've seen uh, a number of uh, big successes come through with that where uh, some of these entrepreneurial companies have been able to uh, really sharpen their strategies, uh, to pilot different marketing approaches, uh, to bring their cost base down, 
So some of the pathways to profitability approaches uh, that we've been working with them on. Interestingly as well, for people within the member companies, uh, it's been hugely rewarding uh, to have the opportunity to mentor uh, some people in much smaller organizations in very different sorts of segments. Uh, and we've, we've seen some very strong connections made uh, and actually uh, a lot of develop, uh, personal development growth uh, from people within the member organizations who've been uh, who've seen a whole new world open up in front of them and they found it very energizing and also a number of them have seen business opportunities uh, coming out of those relationships. Thanks Charlie. Uh, maybe uh, we can go to the, uh, the screen where we show some of these businesses um, that we've been uh, that we've been working with our our 2018 cohort is just graduating today. As you said, it's a one-year program uh, that starts um, uh, on World Toilet Day with the announcement of the new cohort and goes and, and runs until World Toilet Day the next year. So we have our 2018 cohort graduating today with a, a number of uh, a number of achievements, which you're going to hear throughout today, uh, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Um, but but here they are, um, our, our 2018 cohort uh, together with their. Uh, multinational mentors, um, and um, in the uh, in the achievements, what we're we're really proud of this year is, um, as Charlie was saying, that that move towards um, uh, deepened partnerships between large businesses and small business, where there's mutual business interest um, there, and so. Uh, a number of these companies that you see up here are going to be announcing today uh, in the next session. So we'll we'll keep you waiting for that for now. But in the next session, they will announce the partnerships that they've uh, that they've struck um, uh, between uh, the, the companies they've been working with in the accelerator program. Um, and the other side of that is investment uh, as well. Um, the, the sanitation sector has been uh, quite nascent since we've begun, but is really growing quickly to meet the the market demand. We are seeing interest from uh, commercial investors now, and we have a number of our our companies also in due diligence with uh, commercial investors, which we, we think is really exciting. So, so stay tuned uh, for some of those announcements. Um, uh, maybe we can go to uh, our vision now of the sanitation economy. You see it on the screen uh, behind us, um, but also I'll, I'll ask our colleagues to, to put up the, the sanitation economy screen now. Um, th this was really a culmination of those learnings that you were talking about, um, that we were learning through the accelerator program, learning about where the business opportunities um, are in the sanitation system. And I, and I think um, we were quite surprised on, on really what we found. And so can you talk to us a, a little bit about um, that business opportunity uh, in the sanitation economy, both from your perspective as chairman, uh, as well as you, your perspective as a union leader? Sure. So I think the first thing to say is that the the sanitation economy is uh, an enormous opportunity uh, and obviously has uh, toilets and sanitation at its heart, but it goes significantly beyond that. And I think the value of the sanitation economy thinking, uh, planning and doing uh, comes from seeing the three sectors as interconnected. Because obviously uh, it's relatively straightforward to build a toilet for someone who doesn't have one, but if you don't have uh, a a, a, a plan to either capture or uh, dispose of the waste safely, then that's, that presents a, a problem for further down the line. Uh, uh, but also it's a missed opportunity because uh, the more we've looked at it, the more we see that uh, the, by, by interconnecting the three circles, so the toilet economy, the circular sanitation economy, and the smart sanitation economy, the more we believe we can create greater value out of sanitation, both personal and societal value, but also business value, uh, and also uh, greater efficiencies because uh, whether through digitization, uh, whether through designing for an integrated circular approach from the start, uh, that those are some of the things that are gonna help these uh, very innovative approaches to, uh, to reach scale. So, uh, and, and I think one of the most encouraging aspects of the cohorts this year is that throughout the year, this theme of di digitization has grown and grown. And so whether it be um, uh, sensors that uh, the GAV team have been using in their toilets uh, or the, uh, the, the level of data that biomass controls uh, are able to capture through their, uh, their off-grid uh, waste treatment uh, solutions uh, and even monitor that from the United States uh, virtually through uh, through plants on the ground in India is, is I think, illuminating. Uh, and I think that's where we see particular opportunity to use data 
uh, to really sharpen the, uh, the opportunities for the user uh, and also to uh, improve the cost efficiencies and ultimately profitability of these models uh, for the businesses running them. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, you know, the, the vision of this financial economy, I think has, uh, we've been told, you know, sort of landed, I think, um, in, in a lot of ways, as you say, um, that opportunity beyond toilets. Um, as the Toilet Board Coalition, toilet in our name, we're often asked that, you know, is it really, you know, about toilet innovation? And it is, but as you were saying, it's so much more than that. It's, it's circular um, waste management or circular sanitation economy where we really leverage resources and the assets um, in the system uh, to make something new and to, you know, to address scarcity uh, in the market in terms of water, in terms of uh, nutrients and, um, and in, in terms of uh, health information. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, though, um, I think that there's another part of the story which hasn't been told as much yet and, and part of, again, the theme of this virtual summit, which is really about what businesses are doing now. Mm -hmm. So how are businesses already um, seeing benefits from the sanitation economy? Um, uh, what are they doing? Um, what are, are some of the, the projects that, that you're working on? Um, the sanitation economy isn't just a vision, there's, there's actual market activity now. Can you talk a little bit about sure. that? So I think one of the interesting uh, examples has been, uh, so Lixil uh, and uh, Tiger Toilets, uh, who've been working very closely together through the Toilet Accelerator. And I think both sides have really benefited from the other's contribution. Uh, and, and interestingly, what's emerging is an exciting uh, opportunity for Lixil to sell more complete uh, uh, solutions rather than just the, uh, uh, the, the toilets through their, their groundbreaking Sato pan, um, but also looking to sell more complete solutions uh, with the Tiger toilets, which use worms to break down uh, human waste in a pit so that they effectively the pit, the pit doesn't need refilling. So that's just one, one, uh, one example. Uh, I think another example is um, how uh, so Unilever has been starting to work with uh, with Garv and uh, some other players to see how we could uh, bring how we could start to leverage sensor technology that others have developed into uh, some of our ongoing programs, whether it's uh, into school programs where we work with schools to improve uh, school sanitation. Uh, or indeed uh, to help us as we look to scale up the hygiene center, the Subida hygiene center uh, that we've opened in Mumbai and, and to get to more sites uh, across the city, um, uh, seeing how we can use uh, some of the digital technologies that others have been uh, pioneering uh, and bring those in and by collaborating and partnering together. I think we're very excited about how some of those opportunities can, uh, can pay off. I want to pick up on the partnership element as well. I think um, an interesting, you know, uniqueness of the Toilet Board Coalition is how all of the businesses work together. So um, we've talked about how, um, you know, you as large multinationals are working with the smaller businesses in the cohort and, and finding new value uh, areas there. Um, but in addition, you're, you're working together across um, the, the different um, uh, sectors that, that you're in. And, and I think that um, as the, the Toilet Board grows, we're starting to add um, more companies um, uh, from the toilet economy into the circular sanitation economy. Veolia has joined us this year and into the, the digital space with the European Space Agency and, and MIT, um, as long as um, uh, other companies are, are joining us there. And, and to see this um, cross-fertilization of, uh, of expertise going across those economies is starting to to also produce potential um, for, for new markets. Good. Let me pick up on one of those points because I think that's where the sanitation and economy thinking has really helped to frame the opportunity because uh, I think the, the founder company started off more focused on the toilet economy because it was perhaps the most obvious for those companies. Uh, but increasingly as we worked with the accelerators, as we worked with the sanitation experts and, uh, and NGOs, the broader opportunity really started to open up. And so what we've also been doing uh, is then identifying who are the natural partners who are not already at the table, whether they be big, small businesses, whether they be uh, innovators or uh, investment groups uh, who can help us to unlock the broader opportunity. And, uh, and so it's, it's fantastic that we've had uh, Violia join. Uh, so uh, one of the world's largest uh, waste treatment companies and uh, energy companies as well. And, uh, and their insight has been very, very powerful. Um, and also, I think for many of, the, many of these uh, big, well-established companies, uh, it provides a, a great exploration opportunity 
to stay connected to some of the emerging opportunities. Uh, many of the, the member companies are, are big, have been around for many decades, and so have you know, very efficient, well-honed operations in their core businesses. But as all aspects of businesses increasingly get disrupted, it's a way of staying connected to those disruptions and actually partner early with the disruptors uh, uh, and, and starting to evolve our business models uh, to build the, the, the revenue streams of the future. So you heard it here, our chairman of the, uh, of the Teleboard Coalitioning, Coalition, um, or encouraging other businesses to join us in order to, uh, in order to unlock this, uh, um, this new opportunity. Um, maybe going just for a moment into um, you know, some of these areas that we're starting to dig deeper into um, in the circular economy and the smart sanitation economy. And, and if we could see the, um, the slide for, uh, for some of the new work that we're going to be revealing over the next couple of days, um, our work on uh, smart sanitation city in the, in the city of Pune, um, and also some new work in the agricultural sector, um, really starting to, to unlock um, um, uh, some, some new opportunities in, in agriculture. And, and, and in both of these areas, really interesting opportunities to, to test bed many of the new technologies that are, are coming online. And, and this is really all new, not yet proven at scale. Um, so really interesting opportunities. Um, also new business models. And as you were saying, Charlie, how uh, potentially are some of these new approaches disrupting um, traditional business models and, and how can we get ahead um, of that curve uh, working together as a business community? And so in the circular sanitation economy, um, being able to show this you know, biological resource stream um, working as a system um, in a case uh, such as a plantation yes. where companies have ownership there and, and companies can, can really um, um, experiment. You know what your costs are, you know um, where your revenue streams are to see where new things are, are, are coming in. Um, on the flip side, uh, in the smart sanitation um, uh, city context, uh, we've been able to work with the city of Pune in, um, in India um, to test fed a number of, uh, of digital sensing technologies that are being deployed in smart cities but hadn't yet um, trickled into the uh, sanitation sector. And so being able to put these two, um, these two pieces together and ensure that sanitation also gets smart and is also able to then leverage uh, the insights and decision-making power that comes along with that. Um, can you maybe just talk from your perspective, Charlie, on, on these two projects and this sort of new area for the toilet board, really, um, in these test bed areas? So starting maybe with the, uh, the circular sanitation economy, uh, the, uh, the opportunity in agriculture is something that we've been exploring with Tata. Uh, so uh, Tata Trees, the ethical, Tata Tea, uh, the ethical tea partnership. And, and I think the, the thought is simple, which is uh, firstly, by improving the provision of sanitation to people who live and work uh, on, in these uh, areas, um, <clears throat> but also doing it in such a way that the, the value of, uh, of human waste and food waste, or uh, in the case of human waste, what we at the Toilet Board Coalition refer to as toilet resources, which is a simple shift in language but it reveals the, the, if you like, the biological richness uh, behind uh, what, is, what is in the toilets and, and how you can set up systems to extract uh, value, whether that be energy value, whether that be a nutritional agricultural value uh, uh, as a way of um, uh, improving uh, livelihoods, improving potentially crop yields uh, and improving energy consumption. And so uh, we've done some early piloting uh, with Tata uh, on one of their tier states and some of the uh, early findings are captured in this report and, uh, and showing some areas which I think looking very promising. Others also highlighting that there are some more challenges and more investment required there. So I'd encourage you to have a look at that report which is now available on, on the website. From the smart sanitation city uh, perspective, uh, we're very grateful to the Pune uh, Municipal Corporation uh, for uh, partnering with us on this and they're a very uh, leading city in terms of uh, smart uh, smart city thinking and uh, and I think some of the ideas that we're some of the technologies that we're going in now to, to pilot uh, they have many challenges ahead but if if we can find a way over those challenges uh, the ability of uh, of municipal communal toilets to potentially provide uh, uh, anonymous health data on a mass scale uh, that could provide valuable data to uh, the city health authorities, <clears throat> could potentially 
uh, identify uh, disease outbreaks uh, early on and, and trigger interventions in certain neighborhoods to stop that spreading. These are some of the possibilities that could come out of sensors in toilets. And I can say with certainty that when we started uh, as a, a group of uh, members in 2015, uh, that that was not on anyone's mind. Uh, and, and I think it just goes to show how rapidly the technology is advancing, but also how the integrated thinking coming through the, uh, the sanitation economy model is, is opening up many, many, many opportunities that we didn't even know could be possible. Great, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, and, and so maybe now, um, just with a couple of minutes left in, uh, in this interview, I wanna you know, go to the future. We, we started talking a little bit about some of these newer opportunity areas. Um, uh, maybe we can go to the, um, uh, the slide on our, our 2019 um, cohort. And while we're doing that, um, I should say that uh, these, these reports um, that we've just talked about will be um, talked about in much more detail, getting into some of those key insights that, that have been learned over this year. Um, tomorrow, we'll talk about the um, sanitation economy in the, uh, in the agricultural sector, uh, together with our, um, our colleague, Sandy Roger, a circular economy expert um, at the Tola Board uh, and uh, COO. Um, we will also talk with Yolia tomorrow on, on their vision for the, for the future of the, the resource uh, economy uh, and, uh, and many of our, our companies, that uh, small companies from the Accelerator Program um, innovating in that area. Um, in addition, on Wednesday, um, we'll get into the Smart Sanitation City, um, really uh, interesting stuff from our technology partners um, uh, from MIT and the types of technologies that we're, um, that we're working with. Um, also, some, some really future-looking stuff from the uh, European Space Agency, who, who believe that space technologies could be um, really interesting um, for, for sanitation, and, uh, and in particular, bringing those technologies to development. Um, and, uh, and we'll hear about that more on, uh, on Wednesday as well. We'll have our partners from the uh, Pune Municipal Corporation and Pune Smart City with us to, to hear their views on, uh, on the project and, and um, how smart sanitation is benefiting their city. Um, so now, a bit of a big reveal here. It's always quite exciting on World Toilet Day to announce our, our 2019 cohort. You'll get a chance to meet them on uh, Wednesday as well uh, in a special session with the, the companies and their mentors but here it is live. Um, the winners, the <laughs> those that have been uh, chosen for our 2019 uh, accelerator cohort, we have um, uh, Sati in India, ATEC in Cambodia, um, OAV's uh, business in uh, Bangladesh, uh, Lutel in India, Live Clean in Zambia, and Jolex in Uganda. So quite a, uh, a diversified group of companies from um, from different geographies and, and really spanning the, the, the full sanitation economy from the toilet economy to the circular sanitation economy and the, um, uh, and the smart sanitation economy. And, and maybe Charlie, would you just say something about um, the process that we go through as a steering committee to select these companies and, um, and in particular, some of those that have been selected uh, to be mentored by Unilever? Certainly. So uh, what we do is we work with uh, a range of experts to, and, and we're scanning all the year round uh, for uh, potential uh, future partners. And uh, as I said earlier, the, uh, the, the, the speed of development and new, new players emerging is remarkable. Uh, and then also we open up to an application uh, process and uh, many people uh, applied this year. And then we go through a filtering process where we contact them, we, uh, we start to uh, interview some of the most promising candidates, and then really really understanding where their, uh, their organization is at, uh, what are some of their goals, uh, and really trying to identify the, uh, the organizations and businesses who uh, have quite a distinctive idea, uh, quite a distinctive business model, and that we believe can contribute to making the, the, the menu of options available within the sanitation economy uh, model uh, stronger and more robust and more diverse. Uh, and so uh, this year, I think there are some very impressive uh, candidates there. Um, in, and, and the other thing that we look to do is to match the, uh, the mentor, the, the right uh, mentor and mentee. Mm -hmm. So uh, we typically look at where the, uh, the geography, where the uh, organization is based. Uh, also, the, uh, the, the angle that they take on the sanitation economy and then identify which of the corporate members has the closest fit with that. 
uh, and also may be able to benefit themselves from partnering with this organization uh, and vice versa. So, uh, so Unilever is going to be uh, partnering with Live Clean, uh, a uh, Lusaka-based uh, organization, so in Zambia. Uh, and in fact, the, uh, the Unilever country manager in Zambia is going to be personally overseeing that. And Great, I'm going to stop you there to not give away too much before we meet these entrepreneurs uh, on, on Wednesday um, together with their members. But right. and we're also just about out of time, and I, I did want to make a couple of announcements um, while you're here. So um, World Toilet Day uh, 2018 uh, kicked off here with our chairman, um, Charlie Beaver, of the Toilet Board Coalition's uh, chairman. And uh, and coming up next in the, in the program today, we're focused on the the toilet economy, and I believe you're going to show, see a, a short animation. You're going to hear from um, uh, many of our companies that have been working uh, in the toilet economy, um, both the, the small companies and innovators and, and also our large companies, and, and uh, you'll hear about some of the new partnerships um, that are, are being developed. Um, tomorrow, uh, of course, the circular sanitation economy will be in focus, um, and, uh, and on Wednesday, the smart sanitation economy. So lots coming up, um, all online. Um, you can uh, catch the full program at uh, sanitationeconomy.com um, or by checking out our website, www.toiletboard.org. Um, thank you very much, and thank you to Charlie. Thank you, Charlie, <laughs> and happy World Toilet Day. Thank you.